Hey everyone, it's Brandon. So I'm going to be re recording here and playing for you the chapter one of the Multifamily Millionaire Volume One. Of course, that's Volume One out of the two volume set that we're releasing uh, at BiggerPockets.com/store this week. And so, just an FYI. The actual audiobook version of the book, which is also for sale right now at biggerpockets.com slash store, that version is not me reading it. We hired someone who actually knows how to read well, and they're going to be doing that. But I wanted to read this one to you, just give you a taste, a tease of what is to come inside the book. I think you're going to like it. It would mean the world to me if you picked it up. Again, biggerpockets.com slash store. But uh, take a listen. See what you think. And... If you think uh, this is something that you could learn and grow from, pick up both copies, volume one and volume two. Volume one is more on small multi. Volume two is more on large multi. And uh, yeah, support me, bigger pockets, and better your own future by learning about multifamily. So with that said, let me jump into reading chapter one of the Multifamily Millionaire, volume one. There are a lot of ways to invest in real estate, such as buying single family houses, storage units, buying office buildings, mobile homes, flipping houses, skyscrapers, uh, large apartment complexes, small multifamily real estate. You know what? There are many highly successful people in all of these niches. And that's the great thing about real estate, the plethora, the plethora, I like that word, of choices. But that's also the dangerous thing about real estate. There's so many choices. You know, as business author Seth Godin once said, in a world where we have too many choices and too little time, the obvious thing to do is just ignore stuff. When faced with the hundreds of different paths that one can take to build a life of wealth and happiness, many people simply ignore them all. They give up on their dreams. They go back to doing what they know, watching television, eating bad food, and hoping the government takes care of them in the few years between retirement and death. But not you. I mean, after all, you're reading a book on buying small multifamily real estate. So the topic obviously pulls at you and for good reason. Multifamily real estate is one of the greatest investments someone can make and one of the best ways to begin building serious wealth and long-term income. This book is designed to help you do just that. Hey, but first, let's get on the same page. Defining multifamily properties. Multifamily, multi-unit, multi-dwelling unit, apartments, complexes, flats. Look, there's many different names, but they all refer to a type of real estate that we'll just call multifamily throughout this book and volume two. A multifamily property is a singularly owned property that contains two or more residential housing units. Each residential area contains at minimum a bathroom, a kitchen, and some place for a bed. Multifamily, therefore, could refer to a 500-unit apartment complex in the suburbs, a duplex in the city, or a fourplex in the country. Multifamily properties come in all shapes and sizes, large buildings, small buildings, even separate buildings on the same lot. In fact, my first multifamily property, the one I actually mentioned in the preface, contain two single family houses located on one city lot, separated by a driveway and some dirt and grass. I also own a three unit and a four unit with similar setups. Additionally, I have a five unit that is located in one giant square building. And there's a triplex that I bought with one unit upstairs and one unit on the main floor and then one in the basement with completely separate vacation rental unit in the backyard. Or take for example, the property I own that contains 50 different mobile home units, each home independently owned by a resident but each lot that the home sits upon is owned by me. Or the 126-unit apartment complex Brian Murray owns in New York. Or the house my friend and business partner Ryan Murdoch owns that was once a large single-family house, but it's been carved up and remodeled over the past 140 years. And now it houses four separate families. As you can see, multifamily is a broad niche. To cover the full spectrum of opportunities and provide as much value as possible, we're going to divide multifamily investing into two tiers. This book, Volume 1 of The Multifamily Millionaire, with writing led by me, Brandon, focuses on what we call small multifamily real estate. Volume 2, with the writing mostly led by Brian Murray, focuses on what we call large multifamily real estate. But that begs the question, what is large and what is small? Well, oftentimes, people draw a simple line between small and large properties, four units. They consider anything with four units or fewer to be small, anything five units or more to be large. And when it comes to lending, they're not wrong. I mean, you'll learn later in the book, getting a loan on a single family house, duplex, triplex, or fourplex is different than getting a loan on anything with five units or more. However, aside from financing in the real world, buying a fourplex is not all that different from buying a five unit property. But buying a 200 unit property is very different from buying a fourplex. So where do we draw the line? We want to make sure that someone reading this book is equipped to buy a five unit, an eight unit, or even a 20 unit if they want to. Because it's not that difficult. You can do this, even if you're just starting out. 
rather than making a strict distinction between small and large based on the specific number of units, we have decided to draw a softer boundary between small and large, and that's one based on approach. You see, the approach to buying a duplex is not that different from the approach to buying an eight unit. They require very similar processes, people, and skill sets. Now, there are many different processes, people, and skill sets involved when buying a 200-unit apartment complex. That type of purchase likely involves tens of millions of dollars and the expertise of a team of professionals, which much of the work taking place around long mahogany tables. In practice, investing in large apartment complexes is much more akin to buying, owning, and selling a business. Quarterly meetings, quarterly returns, hierarchies of employees, fundraising, webinars, mission statements, and business plans. Now, we're certainly not saying large multifamily isn't within reach for small investors who want to go big, because it is, but it requires a different approach. Patience, grasshopper, we will get there in volume two. Now, purchasing a duplex, a triplex, or something similar, on the other hand, that's a much simpler process. You'll be likely using your own cash or a bank loan, a partner, or some other more creative method to finance the deal. You'll be managing the property yourself, or maybe you'll hire a small local property manager to assist. You're likely not going to be forming companies inside companies inside companies. And the property is going to likely be in your own name or perhaps in one LLC. Small multifamily real estate investing is something an individual can do independently with the help of some various independent contractors like a title company or an attorney or a property manager that they're brought in to handle specific aspects of the job. Now, to help clarify how that differs from large multifamily real estate, I'm going to give you a side-by-side -side breakdown of some of the differences between investing in small multifamily real estate, which we're focusing on in this volume, and large multifamily, which is in the focus of volume two. Now, if you are reading the book, you would see a side-by-side -side chart, uh, but I'm just going to go read left to right, left to right, left to right. That'll make sense here in a second. Basically, small and then how large compares with that. So, small multifamily, likely financed by a bank, a local bank. Large multifamily, likely financed by large commercial lenders with assistance of mortgage brokers. Small multifamily, the down payment's probably self-funded. Large multifamily, the down payment is probably funded by raising money from investors. Small multifamily is typically managed by owner or small local property management. And large multifamily is typically managed by large third-party property managers with on-site staff. Small multifamily usually is local, though long distance is entirely possible. With large multifamily, long distance is usual, but local is possible. Small multifamily, the owner likely knows that most of the tenants' names. Large multifamily, it's very unlikely that the owner would know any of the tenants' names. Small multifamily, the repair work is done by the owner or some handyman hired by the owner. Large multifamily, repair work to units is done by contractors or on-site employees. Small multifamily, property rehabs performed by the owner or local contractors who handle these small-scale rehab projects. Large multifamily, the property rehab is performed by contractors, again, who handle the large-scale projects. Small multifamily properties, uh, the bank's decision on whether to fund it is typically based on the owner's borrowing strength. This is important. Large multifamily, the bank's decision on whether to fund is typically and mostly based on the property's business strength. In a small multifamily, the owner usually invo is involved in the day-to-day -day operations of the investment. With a large multifamily, the owner is usually not involved in the daily operation of the investment. Now, of course, these are general guidelines. It's entirely possible to see the owner of a 200-unit apartment complex show up in overalls to do their own work. It's also entirely possible to see the owner of a duplex in a suit and running their business entirely as a business without ever engaging in the daily operations of the property. However, the distinctions above tend to hold true. So that's where we've divided our coverage into the two volumes accordingly. Will the information in this book help you invest in duplexes, triplexes, fourplexes? Definitely. Will it help you take down that 20 unit you've been driving past for years? Absolutely. Will it help you raise $6 million in a 506C Reg D fund with a 6535 LPGP split and an 8 to 15% tiered waterfall for distributions? Eh, for that, you're going to want to read volume two. <laughs> Let's start here anyway. This book will give you the foundation the lessons you learn in this book about small multifamily real estate will give you the tools, knowledge, and confidence to eventually move into the big leagues if you want. And of course, you don't have to move into the big leagues. Maybe buying a giant apartment complex doesn't even sound appealing. That's totally fine by us. You can build massive wealth and financial independence, not only for yourself, but also for your children and their children just by effectively buying and managing small multifamily real estate. This book will show you how. Eight reasons to love small multifamily real estate. 
We titled this two volume set, The Multifamily Millionaire, because we believe multifamily real estate is the greatest way for the average person to become a millionaire. It's that simple. Millions of people for generations have become millionaires thanks to real estate. Even people with less intelligence, fewer connections, and less capital than you, like they're doing it. There are far too many benefits to invest in small multifamily properties to list them all here. So I'm just going to highlight eight of our favorite. Number one, cash flow. Let's play a quick grade school math game. Becky sells cookies. She earns 10 bucks at the bake sale. Go Becky. But Becky had to spend money on baking supplies. In total, she spent $7. Therefore, how much profit did Becky actually earn? Three bucks. That's Becky's cash flow. It's the profit earned after paying all of the business's bills. Becky's cash flow is hers to spend on whatever she wants. The same is true for your cash flow, and it's one of the reasons we love small multifamily real estate so much. It offers the opportunity to earn a lot of cash flow. When purchased at the right price, which you're going to learn to do, and managed correctly, which you're going to learn to do, small multifamily real estate tends to generate substantial monthly cash flow. Collect enough of these properties, and you'll be able to quit your job sooner than you ever thought possible. It really doesn't take that many to give you the financial resources to live an incredible life. It just takes the right ones. This book is going to teach you how exactly to find, buy, and manage the right ones. Now, second benefit to love multifamily real estate, simple and low cost financing. Now, a few minutes ago, I mentioned that when it comes to lending, banks and lenders tend to draw a line between small and large multifamily properties. So let's discuss that a little bit more here. Properties with one, two, three, and four residential units are generally covered by a field of lending known as residential lending. While properties that have five or more residential units, like apartment complexes, they're covered by commercial lending. Now, although both types of lending provide a similar service, loans that allow you to purchase real estate, there are some minor and major differences between the two. Residential lending offers usually better interest rates, less money down, and longer terms. Additionally, commercial loans often contain a provision known as a balloon, which means there's a date that the entire loan's remaining balance has to be paid back, regardless of how long it's spread out over. For example, let's say you have a 5.5% interest rate on a $100,000 commercial loan. And let's say that's spread out over 25 years. So if you do the math, your monthly payment would be roughly $614. However, even though that loan is spread out over 25 years, you might have a seven-year balloon payment, meaning the entire remaining balance of the loan is due at the end of year seven, even though the loan hasn't been paid off. This would require you to either sell the property or refinance it, which means to get a new loan before that deadline. Now, residential financing on the small multifamily side, the one to four units, tends to be much more simple and straightforward, not to mention cheaper than commercial financing. Thus, another benefit of small multifamily real estate investing is the ability to obtain that residential financing as long as your unit has four units or fewer. Now, third reason to love small multifamily real estate, the abundance of opportunities. Most markets contain a small most markets contain small multifamily properties. And as a result, you aren't necessarily looking for a needle in a haystack. In fact, in chapter four, we're gonna lay out seven different types of small multifamily properties that you can look for, including monster houses, cottages, and up and downs. Of course, some locations tend to have more small multifamily properties than others, but the bottom line is you can invest in small multifamily properties just about anywhere. Number four, less competition. Although you can find multifamily properties in almost any market, most real estate buyers, they're not looking to buy a small multifamily property. Most of them are looking for single family properties to call home. They aren't concerned with cash flow or other financial metrics. Logic and math play second fiddle to the emotional draw of a cute kitchen, a cute front porch, and a cute street for their cute kids to play in. And therefore, when you invest in single family real estate, you are competing with buyers who will pay more than they should because emotion tells them to. Emotion is tough to compete with when you're trying to find good investments. Now, that's not to say single family houses never work as investments. However, the competition for those that, that do, they can be fierce and it can force investors to focus on off-market acquisition strategies and big major rehab projects. Now, although you'll face significantly less competition when shopping for large multifamily properties, that competition will be much savvier. On the big deals, you're going to be going up against teams of well-trained, well-financed, well-educated professionals. Now, small multifamily, what we're talking about in this volume, is wedged between those two highly competitive sectors. Armed with the knowledge in this book, you'll be perfectly positioned to take advantage of this real estate sweet spot. You'll be savvier than the average person who's shopping for a home. 
and you're going to be looking to buy deals that are simply too small for the big professionals to consider. As the law of supply and demand dictates, where there is less competition, better deals can be found. Those lucrative small multifamily deals can be your ticket to financial freedom fast. Now, the fifth benefit of small multifamily, the growth potential. Imagine being able to wake up every morning when you want, not when you have to. Imagine spending as much time as you desire with your kids, with your spouse, with your dog. Imagine not feeling guilty when you go to the gym because you have more than enough time. Imagine working hard on work that you love, that energizes you, that allows you to take bigger risks. Never again will you have to watch the clock waiting for the small break your office allows. These are not pipe dreams. This is real life for Brian and me and for millions of other people who have successfully invested in real estate. Maybe your idea of financial freedom is different, but that's the best part about financial freedom. You get to choose. Let's be honest. You'd like to have financial freedom, however you define it, sooner rather than later, right? Now, whether you love your job or you want to quit tomorrow, doesn't really matter. The freedom to choose how to live your life unrestricted by the conventional need for money sounds pretty amazing to most, pretty much everyone. And here's the thing. With multifamily real estate, you can get there faster. When you invest in multifamily real estate, your portfolio grows more quickly than it would if you were collecting single family houses. Yet the surprising truth is that it's not twice as difficult or expensive to buy a duplex versus a single family house. It's not four times as difficult or expensive to buy a fourplex versus a single family. In fact, it really takes about the same amount of work. If speed is important to you, investing in multifamily real estate will get you to the finish line faster. Now in chapter two, we're gonna delve into a concept that we call the stack, which is perhaps the most effective strategy for scaling a real estate business faster than you could ever imagined. Stay tuned for that. Now, the sixth benefit to small multifamily, the opportunity to buy from bad, burned out, or checked out landlords. People get into real estate for a variety of reasons, and many don't have the same level of excitement as you do. In fact, plenty of current landlords never wanted to be a landlord or they've long since discovered they just don't enjoy it. They may have inherited a property and they have no idea what they're doing, or perhaps they bought into the idea that real estate investing was a get rich quick and easy way to make money, but they've been unwilling or unable to do what is necessary to make their investment work. Now, regardless of why, many landlords are burned out. The reason is that owning rental properties is not an entirely passive activity, especially at the beginning. It requires skills, knowledge, and persistence. It may also require that you make some difficult decisions, maybe miss some important events, and continually have to educate yourself on the best practices and legal changes, among other things. Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't take the plunge. I'm not trying to talk you out of it. On the contrary, some of life's most worthwhile pursuits are found on the road less traveled. The easy path isn't always the right path, and the right path isn't always the easy one. Now, we don't say this to scare you. Landlording can eventually become passive, and there are many ways to make it simple and easy. Just like in sports, mastery comes after significant and continual personal improvement. If you read books, create systems, make and learn from mistakes, and do it all over and go over and over and over again, in time, landlording becomes easier and even fun. But for the many, many landlords out there who have not put the time into becoming good at their job, it can be hell and cause burnout. Now, one landlord's burnout, though, is another landlord's opportunity. In fact, most of the properties we have purchased over our careers have been from failed, miserable landlords. Whether the landlord failed completely and the property was foreclosed on, or maybe the landlord simply gave up and sold the property at a discount to get out from under it, our best deals have come from burned out or neglected landlords. They, there are many opportunities for the ambitious real estate investor to buy these deals, turn them around, and make a great profit. Number seven, reason to love small multifamily properties, the house hacking potential. You know, one of the best ways for new investors to get started in multifamily is through a strategy we call house hacking. So house hacking means that the homeowner lives in one of the units and rents the other or more units of their property out so they can live more cheaply than normal, maybe even for free. Now, the story I told in the preface of this book, which you obviously have to read the book to be able to read that story, was based on house hacking. The income from the rented units can sometimes cover your entire mortgage payment and more, allowing you to essentially live for free. This is the power of house hacking and small multifamily properties make that possible. Now, why would anyone choose to live in a rental property where they have to live in one of the units next to your tenants? What makes this option so appealing to new investors? Three words, low down payment. Now, earlier we talked about the difference between residential and commercial lending, including how residential lending tends to be cheaper and easier to obtain. To take this concept a step further, residential lending becomes even better when the borrower is planning to live at the property. 
In the United States, home ownership is strongly encouraged, with the government even assisting to make this dream a reality for people. The government does that through a lending program or different lending programs that offer loans with very low down payments. The most common example is the Federal Housing Administration, FHA, loan, which requires the borrower to put down only 3.5% of the purchase price. Like on a $200,000 property, that could be just $7,000 down. Now, in addition to the FHA program, many banks now offer conventional loans at just 5% down that have some unique advantages over the FHA program for a slightly higher down payment. Now, compare that to a residential loan for a property that the owner is not living in. Down payments might be 20 or even as high as 30% for non-owner occupied property loans, meaning that same $200,000 purchase could require up to $60,000 for a down payment. Now, don't worry if you don't have that kind of money to invest in your next property. Later, I'm going to discuss several different strategies for financing multifamily real estate, no matter how much you currently have in your bank account. Furthermore, these owner-occupied loans, they're obviously designed for an owner to live in the property, but the owner doesn't have to live there forever. Generally, the owner must intend to live in the property for at least one year. After a year, you can move on to bigger and better things. Go get yourself a nice house. But get this, you get to keep the loan in place. In fact, after a year of living in that small duplex and collecting rent from my friend that I mentioned in the preface that you got to read in order to hear that story, I moved into another duplex actually. And I began renting out the first one for an extra 550 bucks a month. Now, 14 years later, I still own that property and it still continues to provide significant monthly cash flow to my bank account. And it all started with a house hack. And number eight, gateway to larger deals. We've already established that building a portfolio is important and the sooner you build a large portfolio, the sooner you become financially free. Therefore, perhaps one of the most important reasons to invest in small multifamily real estate is that those small multifamily deals become a gateway to larger deals. Some real estate personalities advise their followers on social media to never buy a small deal ever. Start with 50 or 100 units, they say. But that's kind of like telling a brand new runner to just sign up for the Boston Marathon. You know, starting with the small Oh, I'm sorry. Starting with the large multifamily real estate, that can be dangerous if you don't have the knowledge, experience, contacts, capital to compensate for all the things you don't yet know. When first building a portfolio, you're going to make mistakes, no matter how closely you follow the advice in this book. However, would you rather go 10% over budget on a $20,000 rehab or 10% over budget on a $200,000 rehab? The former mistake, $2,000, might make you dip into your savings or spend some nights and weekends painting a house to recover those costs. The latter mistake, that could cripple you. Now, small multifamily real estate is an excellent training ground for building your empire. It gives you the knowledge you need to ask the right questions on the big deals. It gives you the expertise to walk into a bank and apply for the larger than average loan. It gives you the credibility to raise millions of dollars from people in your network. It gives you the confidence to make an offer on a property whose monthly water bill is more than you earn in a year. And it gives you the capital to invest in hiring the professionals who will make up your team if and when you decide to head to the big leagues. Now, let's talk about some small multifamily real estate frustrations. At this point, maybe you're thinking, great, small multifamily sounds amazing, but what's the catch? What are these guys not telling us? Well, as most things in life, there are pros and cons. Specifically, we want to point out five primary frustrations that small multifamily investors may encounter along with some advice on how to overcome them. First, bleeding money. That sounds like a band name. Small multifamily real estate investors often discover that the profit never actually materializes after purchasing what they thought was going to be a fantastic investment. They look at the basic math and say, well, the total rent should be $3,000 a month on this triplex and the mortgage payment, it's $2,000. So I'm going to be making $1,000 a month in profit. But where is it? Well, when the projected profit fails to live up to the actual profit, the culprit is almost always the same. Bad math. Plenty of real estate investors, small multifamily or otherwise, they don't know how to accurately analyze an investment. So they base their purchasing decision on math no more complex than the above paragraph. So what's wrong with that math? The problem is there are many more expenses besides the mortgage payment. So in chapter eight, arguably the most important chapter of this book, I'm going to dive real deep into the world of analysis. You're going to learn the difference between phantom cash flow, which is what that above math is, and pure cash flow, which is the secret to your long-term success in early retirement. In fact, if you all only take one thing from this book, I hope it's that concept of pure cash flow, which we'll dive into. We'll also examine the most common expenses you'll encounter while owning small multifamily rentals so you can accurately estimate the future profitability of a property before spending a dime on it. Now, the second frustration, we'll call it, about owning small multifamily properties the property management. 
Many small multifamily real estate investors are frustrated by the level of tenant management needed to maintain a profitable business. Managing multifamily properties is much more demanding than managing single family rentals. In my experience, multifamily tenants tend to have lower incomes than single family renters, which may lead to issues with consistent on-time rent payments. Your systems must be set up to accommodate slightly more frequent interactions with tenants for rent collections and higher turnover rates. Ultimately, your skill as a landlord will be tested more when dealing with... Oh, let me try to say that again. Ultimately, your skill as a landlord will be tested more than when dealing with single family rentals. Now, this is not to say that there aren't really amazing, hardworking, responsible tenants who live in multifamily properties. In fact, the vast majority of our multifamily tenants are exactly that. They pay on time, they don't cause issues, and they're a joy to deal with. Still, if the idea of managing tenants worries you, well, stick with us. By the time you finish the book, you're going to have all the necessary skills to handle whatever situation a tenant throws at you. Number three, shoddy properties. As you begin shopping for small multifamily properties, you may notice that there are a lot of shoddy properties out there, especially at the lower price point. You see, when an individual owns the home they live in, they usually take extra special care of it. They'll make sure that the higher quality repairs are usually performed when they should be. Now, conversely, a good number of small multifamily properties and landlords, many of them are terrible, they focus on property, sorry, they focus on profit more than quality. The pipe leaking? Wrap it in duct tape. Hole in the wall? Fill it with toothpaste. I'm not kidding. Uh, need more space? Slap up some plywood outside the house and you got a brand new bedroom. Permit? What's a permit? You only need a permit when you get caught. Look, when you combine the lack of quality repairs with the old age of many buildings, you have the recipe for a money pit. Every time a tenant moves out, and many times while they're still renting the unit, this shoddy work needs to be fixed, and it can be expensive. Does that mean that all multifamily properties are like this? Of course not. We've owned some previously well-maintained properties and also made a lot of money fixing up properties that were neglected by prior owners. However, you should always get an inspection before buying a property so you know what you're getting into. You should also fix up properties as well as you can when you buy them and do quality, long-lasting repairs and rehabs with qualified, vetted repair professionals and get the permits. This early investment will help guard against ongoing problems. Finally, you should account for the added cost of maintenance when you do your math. And don't worry if you feel like you're not an expert on this yet. You will be. Keep reading. All right, and the fourth frustration with owning small multifamilies is the slumlord factor. If you needed an animal to plow a field, would you choose a workhorse or a show pony? A workhorse, of course. But if you wanted to win an equine beauty contest, I don't even know if I'm saying that word right, you'd probably pick a show pony. See, the type of horse you pick depends on your goal. Most small multifamily properties are the workhorses, not the show ponies of real estate investing. You won't be driving all your friends past your properties hoping for their oohs and ahs. You won't land a starring role on HGTV either. Now, that's because your small multifamily real estate investment is meant to do one thing, generate profits. If you're looking for beautiful houses to impress your girlfriend's father, single family houses might be more up your alley. When you invest in small multifamily properties, get ready for friends and family to joke about you being a quote unquote slum lord. Doesn't matter how nice your properties are. I still get that joke all the time. All right. And number five, the fifth frustration, more variable expenses. Another downside to owning multifamily versus single family properties is the variable nature of some of the expenses, specifically the water bill, the potential, the, he, the potentially heating, the garbage, and the electric bill. Now, depending on that property and location, some of those apply, some might not. When you, the landlord, are responsible for paying certain utility charges, that can go up and down and be hard to predict. Those expenses have the potential to negatively affect your bottom line. I mean, we've both, Brian and I, had tenants deliberately not call to report a water leak just because they don't want anyone coming into their unit to repair it. They'd rather have a constant trickle of water costing the landlord hundreds of dollars a month then have somebody enter their home for a repair. The same applies to heat and electricity. When the landlord's foot in the heating bill, it's not uncommon for a tenant to blast their heat all day while leaving their windows wide open in the dead of winter. If they were paying the bill, you can bet they wouldn't be so wasteful. As a multifamily owner, what can you do? Well, there are several options. Our preference is to shift the responsibility for the bill from the landlord to the tenant of every unit. But sometimes that's simply not feasible. In that case, you'll have to be especially vigilant, 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 
especially vigilant in watching for leaks or open windows. And by the way, throughout this book, this little side, throughout the book, I talk a number of times about this topic of shifting the utility bills. It's one of the most like underutilized but powerful strategies for investing in multifamily real estate. If you can shift the responsibilities, so we talk about in the book how to do that, uh, when you can do it, when you can't do it, and give you some options for being able to make that happen. If you can tap into that secret, there's so many opportunities out there for small multifamily investors. All right, back to the book. The Multifamily Millionaire. Multifamily real estate has the power to turn you into a millionaire. We're living proof. And we want to see you use multifamily real estate to transform your life into an adventure that your children's children's children will still be talking about. Buying any old multifamily property is not going to get you there. You must have the right plan to buy the right property in the right place to get the right profit using the right financing and then manage the whole process right. That might sound overwhelming, but this book will make the mission a reality and turn you into a multifamily millionaire, all by using a simple method we call the stack. It's time to see how this method can completely transform your financial life forever. Key takeaways. This is basically a summary of what you learned in the chapter. Key takeaways. The difference between large and small multifamily properties invest in the approach. Small multifamily is much more hands-on and personal, while large multifamily is more corporate and professional. Understanding both is essential to becoming a real estate millionaire. Second, small multifamily real estate is powerful due to the cash flow it can generate, the incredible financing opportunities available, the commonplace nature of the investment, the reduced competition for deals, the speed at which you can grow your portfolio, the opportunities to land great deals from burned out landlords, the potential for house hacking, and the knowledge you'll gain that will get you the bigger deals. And finally, third, multifamily isn't all rainbows and cupcakes. There are pitfalls. The guidelines laid out in this book will help you avoid them. And that's it for chapter one. Thank you everyone for listening. I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope you go pick up a copy of The Multifamily Millionaire, volume one and volume two, available right now over at biggerpockets.com slash store. There's probably other URLs that'll get you there, but that's the one I can think of right now. And remember, if you buy both volume one and two from Bigger Pockets, uh, you're gonna get a whole bunch of bonus stuff that Brian and I made as well, including some white papers on investing in a post-COVID world, uh, some uh, videos on no money, multifamily real estate investing, and uh, how to jump straight into the bigger deals. Like if you wanna jump into the bigger deals right away, I even got uh, some information on that uh, and a lot more. I mean, the, we really spent a significant amount of time on the bonus content because we want you to buy it from bigger pockets. Support us, help us uh, reach more people. So thank you. Uh, the books, uh, again, will be available at bookstores everywhere, uh, Barnes and Nobles and Amazon and all that later this fall. So you can also look for it there. But right now, only available at biggerpockets.com slash store. And I believe the shipping's free. So go over there, check it out. I think you're gonna like it. Thank you for your support. And uh, if you do like it and you have a good time, make sure you leave me a review for the book over on Bigger Pockets. We have a review section on Bigger Pockets. And of course, if you get it from Amazon or one of those other places, you can leave a review there as well. That's all I got. Thanks everyone for biggerpockets.com. My name is Brandon Turner, signing off. Mm -hmm.